Hello, my awesome, mindfully resilient friends. It's Coach Joseph, and you're listening to another brand new episode of the Mindfully Resilient Podcast. Now, if it's your first time checking out the show, thank you. Thank you for being curious and hitting that play button. And if you were wondering what the show's about, um, shortly put, it's a means to help inspire people to find that extra dose of resilience and persevere in the face of life's many challenges and through sharing my own life experiences to offer lessons and guidance in physical and emotional fitness. It's <laughs> tell you the truth, it's pretty much give a fitness coach a microphone and let them do their thing type of show. And I also invite some amazing guests who I know will leave you with a few, if not many, killer nuggets of wisdom. And when the guest happens to be a coach, you get a double whammy of coaching. How awesome is that? You also get to experience that same kind of coaching I received from them over the years along throughout my journey of growth and finding resilience. And that is why I'm extremely excited to bring you today's episode. You know, my guest today is someone I've known since 2018. And we met at a Cafe Pro conference uh, in Toronto while I was volunteering. Uh, I was helping her with one of her sessions and uh, later on uh, later on in that conference I had an opportunity to talk to her and to share my vision and goals. And she took the time, she graciously took the time to offer some amazing guidance, some amazing coaching. I'll never forget that. Natalie Plamondon Thomas has always shown a genuine interest in helping me, giving me the tools to be more confident in myself, reminding me of what I can truly accomplish and that I have the power to transform the world around me. You know, that's, you know, such a great feeling to, to know that I have uh, people like Natalie, coaches like Natalie in my corner. You know, speaking of Natalie on a professional, on a more of a, uh, how do I say, formal level, uh, she is the expert with a proven system to get you transformational results. She works with people who want to find confidence so they can unlock their full potential. She also works with entrepreneurs who want to find the clarity they need to make money living from their passion. She is a number one international best-selling author of 15 books on success, communication, wellness, and empowerment. She is the founder and CEO of the Think Yourself Academy, offering leading edge online courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and business mentorship. Along the past 30 years, she has inspired over 100,000 audience members, 100,000, and empowered thousands of clients internationally to get rid of their negative self-talk. She combines over 10 years of experience in human resources, 25 years of experience in sales, and over 30 years in the fitness industry. In 2007, she was Fitness Instructor of the Year for Canada. Man, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Somehow, Natalie can. Now, in our conversation, although we could have covered a lot, you know, we had to cut, we had to keep it within a certain time frame. But Natalie offers offers us some amazing insight on how we can use our minds to our advantage to be more confident in what we have to offer with our gifts. Now, you know what? I know you're amped up just as much as I am right now, and I got to hear this conversation again. And I tell you, it just it this fires me up. So. Without further delay, let's tune into my conversation with Natalie Blamondon Thomas. Hey, Natalie, how are you today? I am so thrilled and excited. What a great way to start the day with Coach Papa Joseph. Oh yes, so oh, excited! Thank you very much. I'm very <laughs> excited. By the way, I've been. I think. I think I've been wanting to have you on the show for quite some time, and I, I said, you "No, know, now's the opportunity. Now's the time." And I am grateful and honored that you are joining me today, because friends, today. Natalie is, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. She's one amazing coach, one amazing person. And she lifts people up every, in every setting when it comes to like coaching and inspiration and motivation and transformation. And you will have a lot of amazing nuggets of wisdom 
following our conversation today. And, um, you know, speaking of meeting amazing people, I mean, you and I, you remember, I, I, don't, I remember when we met. I remember when Me we too. met. Me too. And I think I was a volunteer, I was volunteering and I was helping you set up for your session. And I was hunting down for, a, I think it was a, uh, we needed some, we're missing some tech. A memory. clicker. We needed a clicker for the, <laughs> for the presentation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I think, and um, so I was running around, but then I'll tell you this little, little thing about me is that being from Quebec, you know, I, I just, when I see somebody who speaks French outside of Quebec, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm not alone anymore. It's great. And um, you know, I, I felt like we just hit it off and we had a good conversation uh, in the demo sale. You were still offering some books at the end of the conference. The Can By the way, friends, we're talking about the Canfit Pro Conference in Toronto. Uh, it was, I think it was around 2018. And you had, you talked about uh, me, you know, I shared my, my goal of being a speaker. And you are yeah. one of a fantastic speaker uh, and uh, a professional speaker. And you gave me some insight on looking at looking at looking into different organizations that can help me out, like CAPS and and, and also we talked about Toastmasters. So, um, and he just you know it just made me feel like that I felt you know connected and I, you know and I, that I felt like a, yeah this person just met me but she wants to help me. She had a genuine she has a genuine interest in seeing me grow. And uh, since then, I mean, I've been following you. We've been connected. We've hosted together. Yes. Yeah, Camford Pro. By the way, you're my first French <laughs> uh, hosting gig at the Camford That's Pro right. You hosted my, my French session. And yeah, that was awesome. Your French is really good, actually. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're, don't worry, friends. We're going to stick to the English <laughs> to English today. Um, but if you want to do a French podcast, we can do that, possibly. Um, now, beyond... Beyond the formal bio, um, who who is Natalie? <laughs> That's is very Natalie? interesting. It's a deep question, but we all have a why, a purpose that kind of defines us in a way that reveals who we are. Who's yep. Natalie? Who's Natalie backstage? Backstage. So um, I have to say that. I, I love that question. Um, you did send me this question ahead and I had to think about it. Um, I didn't have to think long for my why because I know my why. Um, but I love the who's Natalie because at the end of the day, um, my first thought was I'm a small town girl. Like I, I didn't even speak English when I was dreaming of becoming a professional speakers and I was hearing this voice in my head telling me what you want to be a professional speaker like in English you want to write books in English you don't even speak English what are you talking about <laughs> and I feel that um, this uh, small town girl from Quebec uh, has moved to Toronto and I have moved then to BC and that's where I live now just south of Vancouver and you can take the girl out of Quebec, but you can't take Quebec out of the girl. So somehow I'm still the same, the same small town girl, French Canadian. And I, I would love to believe that um, if I can make it, everybody can. <laughs> like like I, I've been able to, to, to realize my dream. I, I am a professional speaker now and, and I'm doing it in English. And 15 years ago, I didn't even speak English. So somehow, uh, actually, when we met uh, Joseph, I don't think my English was really good. <laughs> I remember teaching some, some classes uh, in Toronto when I was teaching a yoga class. And, you know, at the end, when everybody's um, laying down during the relaxation, right? Like I had just moved to Toronto. And at the end, everybody is laying down during the relaxation. And I wanted them to relax their body, relax their face, relax their, relax their jaw. And I wanted them to put their tongue on the roof of their mouth. And I said, put your thong behind your tits. And everybody started to laugh. I didn't even know why. I don't know what I had said because I was, my French was so, my French accent, accent was so thick. And, and somehow this small town girl that hardly spoke English was able to to, to make it as a professional speaker. So um, 
I'll, I'll move to the second part of your your question is what is your why? Since then, I have been working on my why on on what is my promise statement? What really, um, who do I love to work with? And why do I want to do this? And I have to, to tell you, Joseph, I have been criticized a lot for my promise statement. And I have changed it back and forth until I put my foot down and I said, you know what? It is my promise statement. And that's what, that's what drives me. And I'm going to stick to it. So you've heard of my promise statement. I work with entrepreneurs yeah. who want to find confidence because I'm a confidence expert so that they can make money living from their passion. Because for the longest time, uh, I've worked for a company for 16 years, making good money and having a dream on the side, building my business on the side, because I did not believe I could make it on my own. I thought that I would never make enough money, and especially not in the fitness industry, because, oh, that limiting belief that you don't make money in the fitness industry. I was believing that, right? So I had so many things in my mind. So my promise statement, I work with entrepreneurs who want to find confidence so they can make money living from their passion. A lot of people said, Natalie, how shallow is that? You, you help people make money, really. But I have to tell you that, that I've discovered about five years ago on my first trip to Haiti, how money makes a huge difference. And, and I'm seeing money very differently now. This is my, my godson, Yuri. Oh, by so the way, Yuri, folks, he's pointing at a picture yeah. right now of a uh, oh, yes. little child. So if you That's watch the right. video, you'll see it, but the, the, you, you sponsor, you're, you're sponsoring a little I'm one, I'm right? sponsoring Yuri, exactly. And Yuri, um, Yuri's mom left him at the orphanage because she believed that it would be better for him to live at the orphanage without his mom than to live with her without food. So for $30 a month, I provide a meal to Yuri every day, one sheet for his bed, uh, sometimes a hard boiled egg and extra protein, sometimes chicken, if they're lucky during the month, a toothbrush and a uniform for school. That, all that for $30. So I've been starting to, to count everything in children. So if I want a pair of boots that is $90, it's three children, three times $30. So, wow. so I've been... I've been focusing my life very differently because when you give money to good people, they, go, they do great things with it. And the entrepreneurs that I help making money, they're all people that make a difference. They're people that make the world a better place. So if I help them make money, they can help more people. Close your eyes for a second, except if you're listening to the podcast in your car and you're driving, <laughs> don't close your eyes if you're driving. But everybody else, wherever you are, close your eyes for a second and think of somebody that you've helped. Think of somebody that told you, oh my gosh, Joseph, you've changed my life. Oh my gosh, you have helped me so much. Now I'm going to put $500 million in your bank account. $500 million in your bank account. Think of how many more people you can help with your message. Think of a much bigger platform you can have to help people, a, a better impact you can have on making this world a better place. So that's why it's very important to me because I know that when entrepreneurs that are being nice for a living, that are helping others for a living, I know that they can do a lot more good if, if they have more money. So my job is to help them do this. One, with confidence so that they believe that they can, so that they can start to really believe in themselves because too many people have a great impact to have in the world, but they are not allowing themselves to do this because they don't believe in themselves. And two, because I believe that once they have money, they can do a lot of good with it. So that is my why. Wow. You know, it's, it's that when you understand the depth of it, because when we talk, we think money, we think superficial. But and, then, and, 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 but when you analyze a little bit more and see the people, and you talk about working with people who have a good, a vision for good, a vision for others' well being, and then you understand, okay, 
I mean, these people need to make money in order to keep the business, well, the, their business running to provide. And uh, I think we get lost in a little bit in that language where, oh, you're just doing it for the money. Like, it's at the end of the day, it, you're doing it to, even if it's for self, your family reason, for family reasons, you need to put food on the table for your children, uh -huh. for your family. You need to put, so yes, you're doing it for the money. But I think, you know, at the same time, the, it, the money is not driving you. And it's, it's the, op I think the money is like the happy surprise. You know, it's, yeah, the, it's a good side effect of, yeah. of doing good in the world. The byproduct. Yeah. It's like, it's like fitness, right? Um, I stopped telling people, like, I kind of do it less now, where I'm coaching them. And I'm not thinking about the six pack abs or the toned body or wait, I think just enjoy the journey. Let's learn the movements. Let's do quality movements, experience them, enjoy the journey. And then the fat loss, the toned body, the strength will just be a byproduct of what you're doing to celebrate uh, a byproduct of the celebration of your body, of your, what your body can do. And the feeling that you get, the endorphin that you get, all the, all the feel-good chemicals that are released in your body when you exercise, right? That, it, that right. makes a big difference too. It's all about feeling. It, it makes you feel strong, right? So whenever you exercise right after, you feel good. And it's because that's what exercise does for you. It's a, it's a natural feel-good chemical that gets released in your bloodstream. Oh, it's, it's true. I mean, and here's... And by the way, listeners, my friends, you can try this if you want to, but just a quick discretion, only if you're able to try doing squats before bed. Okay. I've done, I do this all the time. I do about a hundred squat. Well, this is me personally, do what you can, maybe 50 squat, regular squats and a hundred squat pulses. For some reason, my legs, you know, with that lactic acid buildup that happens. Well, as soon as that happens, I, I, I right, right down when I hit the hundred, I lie down and I just relax and I feel good. I just feel good. And I get a good night's sleep. That's me. That's me person. But if you want to try it, full discretion, by the way, uh, you know, it's up to you. Like, so, um, uh, yeah. And, and that's, and that's amazing. And it's, it's the way we think about it. And funny enough, talking about thinking the way the brain works, the way we interpret things. I mean, you, you, you studied, uh, neurosciences as part of your yep. career. Now, what, what triggered, what kind of like, what brought you into this? Because neuroscience is, a, is an amazing complex topic. Well, what, so what, what pushed you into it? So I have to take you back when um, I was at the beginning of my speaking career, I needed a video done. So we had three cameras. So we, have, uh, we had one for the close-up one for the wide angle and one from the back to see the large audience. But the problem was <laughs> there was only 20 people in the room. <laughs> so we kept asking them to move from one section to another so that when we would put all the segments together, it would look like there was a large audience. Now, I remember my first paid speaking engagement. I got a call from an organization wanted me to train their sales force and they asked for my rate. I didn't have a corporate rate. So I go, um, 250. So they say, okay, so for four hours, there would be a thousand. Joseph, I meant 250 for the whole thing, right? <laughs> so I go, uh, yes, that's correct. $1,000, almost choke, right? So I hung up the phone and we got the, I got the contract and I thought, oh, I got the contract. I should have been excited, but instead I felt like a fraud. I remember hearing this nasty voice in my head telling me, you're not a real professional speaker. You don't deserve a thousand dollar paycheck for an afternoon. And that's when I realized I needed to figure out a way to shut down the negative self-talk in my head. I needed to, to change the way I talk to myself, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I spent the last decade studying neuroscience, reading tons of books, um, and, and I created a system, the three-step DNA system. That's the system that's at the base of all my uh, eight international number one best-selling books, and that's the system that's at the base of all my 16 different online courses. Um, and, and what I'm sharing is how do you shut that voice down? Because somehow 
we don't talk to other people like this. You don't walk around and, and tell your friends, oh, you look fat in these jeans or, oh, you're starting your own business. It's never going to work. You're not good enough. But we, we tell that to ourselves, right? <laughs> we trash talk ourselves all the time, all the time. And, and who would want to be our friends if we talk to them the same way we talk to ourselves? Nobody, right? Yeah. And I know that I'm not the only one having these negative self-talk because 85% of people have a lack of self-confidence in at least one area of their life. So I thought this is a big problem and I need to figure out a way to, to, to shut my negative self-talk down so that, so that I, can, I can do what, what the voice is telling me that I, I'm never going to be able to. That's right. I mean, and that's, that's, it's really, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm thinking you're talking to me, like you're talking to the listeners where, and, and I'm just like, I, I, 85% of people lack self-confidence. I'm one of those 85 people, 85%, 85% of people. Um, and it, it happens a lot, you know, you do we, like, and especially recently, like we, I think we fall into, especially with the zoom and online, you know, my case, online fitness, we fall into the comparison trap. Yep. Comparing ourselves to others, saying, why are they making, well, let's say, goes, let's talk about social media. Like, why, why do they have 5,000 followers and I, or like 5,000 likes and I only have 10 likes for a post? And yep. am I not good enough? Or why aren't people hiring me? What's, oh, I must be horrible uh, it, it, without thinking, okay, externally, maybe there's some cir circumstances that they're not sticking with you, you know, because maybe financial, family, person, you know, whatever it is. But we get it stuck into that loop. And what, what, how do you, what do you tell people when they get stuck into that loop? Your clients, and you know, I'm sh and like I'm sure a lot of people that you talk to will have that self lack of self confidence. I mean, that, and well, so what's what's one trick or one trick? I don't like to call it tricks. What's one strategy that someone can use to say to get them out of that? cycle. I agree. Um, strategies is everything because we can't stop life from happening. Uh, you said something very interesting about comparing ourselves. And mm. I, I love to uh, say that we are all reading the same book. <laughs> so um, maybe somebody is at chapter nine, and I'm only at chapter five. So I can certainly help people who are at chapter three because I'm at chapter five and and I'm I can be helped by people that are at chapter nine because I'm at chapter five we're all reading the same book it's not like the people from chapter three won't catch up to me and be at chapter five very very soon if they read the the next two chapters overnight they'll, they'll have reached me maybe I can help them and give them a little summary of what's in chapter four and five. So then they can, shop, they can catch up quicker. And that's what I do is when we are thinking about our own business and our own impact, we need to understand that the people we helped are not the people that are ahead of, of us. There's always tons of people that are behind us in their reading and some people that are ahead of us. And it's fine. If we compare ourselves with people that are two chapters ahead, we get discouraged if we compare to people who are two chapters behind, we feel better about ourselves and we know we can help them. And yeah. when we help others, it makes us feel better as well. Now you're asking, what is a strategy? The first piece that I can offer you is give you um, a bit of brain 101, let's say, to understand how the brain works because mm -hmm. understanding how we have many different parts of the brain um, will help you in your strategy. So firstly, I, I'm going to talk about two parts right now. There's so many things that I love about the brain, but tonight, today I'm going to talk about the logical mind and the unconscious mind. So the logical mind can handle five to nine pieces of information at a time. So that's cool. So I know that your audience is uh, composed to a lot of, of fitness people. So that's why um, as a fitness professional, uh, you can do five to nine things at, a one, at once. You can multitask. You can squat at the same time that you can demonstrate it to your client, observe their form, tell them to align their knee, lift their chest, 
their chest and you can count the reps at the same time. And you can notice the dude at the back of the gym winking at the girl in blue doing bicep curls. You can do all of that at the same time. This is pretty cool. But five to nine pieces of information is not that many things. Have you ever noticed when you're driving to a new address, let's say you're driving, windows are down, music is on, it's a beautiful day, and now you're getting closer to that new address, so you slow down and you start looking at the numbers on the houses. Have you ever caught yourself, Joseph, having to lower the volume on the radio, right? When uh, you're looking at the numbers on the houses, right? I'm guilty of that. By the way, not really looking at the house, I lower it, but when I have to park, I go, turn you have radio to low <laughs> You have to turn the radio off when you have to park, right? Isn't that weird that, that you'll be able to park better without hearing the music? It's because as you have the foot on the brake and the foot on the accelerator, the red light ahead, the kid that's about to cross the street, the lady that more likely will cut you off, the dude in the car next to you winking at you, gross. So when you add looking at the numbers on the houses, the music becomes the one too many. So five to nine pieces of information is not that great after all. And the other thing that we need to know about our logical mind is that 70% of our thoughts are negative. Research shows that we get almost 31 negative thoughts per minute. It's ridiculous the amount of trash that, that gets into our prefrontal cortex. Living at a logical level is always fe feeling like we're behind. So you're, you're always just trying to catch up and it's exhausting and you're working really, really hard. Like you're getting up super early, trying to build your fitness business. And then, and then you accept clients from 5 a.m. until 10 p.m. And then, and then you have to take your kids to school and sport and between your fitness clients, you prep your client's workout you post on social media oh and you have to start a podcast and now you need a clubhouse account oh and you need to have a newsletter and then you still live paycheck to paycheck and then you feel like you're getting further and further away from your dream life it is like you're trying to go to Halifax but you're in an aircraft that's flying to Vancouver you can work as hard as you possibly can but it's never going to work if you stay in that aircraft so a lot of people ask me, okay, Natalie, teach me, how do I get off that aircraft? And I say, no, stay on the aircraft. Instead, talk to the pilot and say, hey, bud, do you mind turning around? Because that's where I'm going. Like imagine, imagine how much faster you're going to get there once the pilot is on board, right? So you just need to get the pilot to turn around and to go in the same direction than you are, right? That's Does right. that make sense? That's right. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean, even sometimes, you know, you have what we call like, you know, our mutual friend Todd Durkin, he calls it stinking thinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you have this negative thought and you're like, no, I, and, you, and the thing is, you know, you know, you're, you're awesome, you're great and you can do it. You have the, the potential to do whatever you're trying to do, even though you're headed in the opposite direction. Now it's just a matter of tuning into that awareness. And I believe it's just stepping out and say, like, okay, and like talking to your pilot. Okay, let's do the first step. What's the first step? Not the 10 steps. What's the first step to change course? Yeah. So the first step is to talk to that pilot, like you said. So that pilot is the other part of the brain that I'm very excited about. It's your unconscious mind. Mm. So the logical mind could handle five to nine pieces of information at a time, while the unconscious mind can handle 2.3 million pieces of information every second. Five to nine for the logical mind, 2.3 million piece of information every second for the unconscious mind. That's where the power is. So that pilot, I call it your personal assistant. So it's like you have this little personal assistant in your head, taking notes on a clipboard, writing down everything that you say or think. But the problem is people wake up in the morning, they look at themselves in the mirror and they go, I'm so tired. I'm so stressed out. I think I'm getting weight. So your personal assistant writes it down, tired, stressed out, getting weight. I got this. Okay. Let me make this happen. Uh, tired. Oh, I know. I'm going to keep her awake all night. She's not going to be able to sleep. She's going to be really tired in the morning. Check. Stressed out, stressed out. Oh, I know. I'm going to make her delete a very important appointment in her calendar. That's going to be really stressful. Check. Gaining weight. Oh, easy one. I can certainly find cho uh, some chocolate or something deep fried for her to eat today. And if all fails, more wine tonight. Check. So your personal assistant is listening to everything that you say or think and makes it happen. So it's very important that 
we tell our personal assistant exactly what we want, not what we don't want. Because we tend to tell our personal assistant what we don't want. Like my clients do this to me all the time. So they um, come into, well, not my physical office, but into my Zoom office um, nowadays. And they tell me everything that they don't want. Natalie, help me. I don't want to be stressed anymore. I don't want to rush everywhere. I don't want to be impatient with my kids and I don't want to be broke. So their personal assistant hears stress, rush, impatient and broke. Perfect. I got this. Even if they said, I don't want to, right? Because our personal assistant only listens to what we want. Like if you tell your contractor that is renovating your kitchen that you would like them to paint your kitchen not blue huh your contractor is not going to know what you want if you say not blue so when it's time to paint the contractor is going to be like oh yeah which color again did they say we would they wanted oh yeah i think there's something about blue and they're going to paint it blue because that's the only information you gave them so if you close your eyes for a second and except if you're driving, of course, and I ask you with your eyes closed, do not visualize Mickey Mouse wearing a yellow tuxedo standing on top of a pink Mercedes Benz. Do not visualize Mickey Mouse wearing a yellow tuxedo standing on top of a pink Mercedes Benz. Now you can reopen your eyes. Did you see it? I did. Right? I, I yeah. See, actually, at the Mercedes Benz, I kind of changed it to a Maserati or a Lamborghini. Oh, nice. Or a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, your brain has to process the whole information before it can negate it. So by the time you negate it, it's too late. It's on the clipboard and the personal assistant's on it and it's going to make it happen. Right. So that's how you talk to your pilot is by you by saying everything that you want instead of what you don't want. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. I mean, I mean, once again, I'm guilty of it. Um, and uh, I mentioned before our show that I'm going through a, a burnout. And folks, I mean, even coaches go through burnout. And uh, uh -huh. you know, but we use this uh, op these opportunities, these moments to teach you how to work with uh, uh, these uh, these emotions. And yeah, there there are times where I say I'm not. I catch myself. And by the way, Natalie, I think about the personal assistant i mean I, i've attended your sessions and i hear the personal assistant and and even you know my wife suzanne she would remind me like you're just telling yourself that out loud you're, it's it's you're just programming it in don't it's so say something else you know you are great then like you are but it's it's so true because then i catch myself especially and here's natalie i mean i don't know i don't know if you've if you uh, what your thoughts are on this or but i think the personal assistant is most busy when you're tired, when mm. you're sleepy. I find that interesting because when I start really self-sabotaging myself in my love, by the way, the most, the go-to self-sabotage language is your love, is your love language. So okay. it's uh, words of affirmation. And it happens when I'm at night and uh, I'm like, oh, I can't do it anymore. I, I stink. And, and then I, I look at myself and then I look at myself in the mirror and I say, Joseph, you're tired. Go to bed. And it's telling my personal assistant, stop writing, shut everything off, go to bed. It's nonsense. Scratch that. Take that away. And sometimes it's too late. He already pocketed it, right? <laughs> it's already, you know, thank you. Auto save, <laughs> you know? Yes. But yeah. I, I get that. And I find that it's so true. You tell yourself that you're going to manifest it. You're going to, and so, and that's where you got to say, take a step back and say, okay. And, and then when it comes to mindfulness on my, you know, when I practice my uh, mindful meditation or, and I, I have these thoughts, I'm like, I have these thoughts, but I must recognize that I am not my thoughts when I'm angry. I'm like, okay. When I, you know, as a parent, yes. And I know all parents have gone through this. You will lose your sugar, honey, ice, and tea over your, with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if those of you don't know that expression, just spell out, pick the first letter of every word, sugar, honey, ice, and tea. And say it out loud. I'm trying to keep the show uh, family friendly. And, um, and, but then I would, I would avoid saying, I, 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 would, I, I won't say I am angry with you. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm feeling angry. I'm having these feelings. I'm, I'm understanding it's a separate entity. But as soon as they, I let them take over, that's when I 
that's when I become the emotion. And you want this one. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling sad. And that's when I realize if I'm feeling this, okay, what am I going to do with this? And then that's when I work with the personal assistant saying, okay, let's work together. Let's do something to change course. Or how can we learn from next time? Let's talk about these emotions. Let's talk about um, uh, this, what happens in your brain when you are what we call in a prefrontal cortex overload. So what happens is when you say, let's say that you're in the kitchen and you're cooking dinner and you're thinking about something very stressful that happened to you at work or the credit card bill that just arrived or whatever. And your kid comes behind you and says, hey, daddy, and you go, what? And you're like, this is not how I wanted to respond. I know better. And I do believe that everybody has a, a drawer with all the answers that they need. You are awesome. You have everything that you need inside you and you're absolutely amazing. And, and you are awesome is actually my tagline. Like that's, that's my business card. You are awesome. That's what's on big on it. And every time and, I write it down, I think of you. Oh, good. Awesome. <laughs> that's my tagline because I do strongly, truly believe as my deepest ingrained belief that everybody is awesome. And my job is to help them find these answers. My job is to help people get rid of all the stuff that is accumulated on top of their answers in that drawer. So everybody has a drawer with all the answers in it. And usually the answers are at the bottom of the drawer. And there's a whole bunch of crap accumulated on top of these answers. So when the kid comes behind them, they respond with the first thing that's on top. And maybe it is frustration or anger or resentment or sadness or, or anxiety or stress that has been accumulated in the drawer. So my job is to help people get rid of all that crap, all the baggage that we're carrying so that when we open the drawer, we have the answer that is more like on top instead of being at the bottom of the drawer. So I'm a really uh, overpaid uh, maid, <laughs> cleaner, <laughs> drawer cleaner, really. So what happens when you have um, a powerful emotion in your prefrontal cortex? Your drawer is full of anxiety or fear or anger or whatever it is. It is like you have a delivery truck in your driveway mm -hmm. that is bringing you a powerful emotion. So you, got, you become in prefrontal cortex overload because the emotion is staying there. An emotion should not last more than uh, 30 to 90 seconds. An emotion has a cycle and you can go through one loop and you would exit the loop. We've seen that in children. Infants, they start being um, super temper tantrum and then 90 seconds later, they're happy again. Oh, and then they're sad again. Oh, and then they're happy again because emotions only last that 30 to 90 seconds. So what happens is that the first time we experience these emotion, anger, fear, hurt, sadness, guilt, we, we, we get protected by our unconscious mind that comes to the rescue and says, that's all right, Joseph, I'm just going to take this emotion from your prefrontal cortex and put it somewhere else in your brain so that it, it unload your prefrontal cortex. And then you can move on with your life. And that's how you exit the loop of that powerful emotion. And the the problem is on that day, it creates a thread. And every single time that you're going to feel this emotion again, your brain is going to add a pearl onto that thread, creating a long necklace of anger. And then another necklace for fear, a necklace for uh, hurt, a necklace for guilt. Mm. Um, so all these powerful emotions have their own necklace. And what happens is when you experience anger, you go through every single pearl, many, many loops. So instead of staying there for 30 to 90 seconds, you might do another loop and another loop and another loop. So the truck stays in your driveway and you're not opening the door to receiving the package because most people are busy, right? Busy is the new black, right? Like you ask anybody, how are you doing? They don't say fine, thank you and you. They say, oh, I'm busy. How are you doing? Oh, busy. How are you doing? Busy. Everybody's so busy, right? Know, and we're busy. Symbol. It's a status. Exactly. Everybody's super busy. 
So that means that when these powerful emotion, when the truck arrives in your driveway, the only purpose of this powerful emotion is to give you the package and be on their way. They want to leave your driveway, but they won't until you open the door to receive the package, but we're not opening the door because we're busy. You're in front of your coworkers at work and then you're smiling or you're in front of clients and then you're like, oh, everything is fine. Everything is okay. And you keep smiling. So we're not opening the door or your child asks you, how are you? How are you doing, mommy? How, are you okay, daddy? Oh yeah, daddy's fine. Yeah, absolutely. And then you smile again and you mm -hmm. pretend that the truck is not there. So we're not opening the door to figure out what is in the package so every single time that there's a powerful emotion that comes to us we get super disappointed or we get ex like we have anxiety but yeah. i don't know if you've noticed in my language i've never said negative or positive emotion they're just powerful and the prefrontal cortex the brain does not know the difference between excitement or anxiety the brain doesn't know the difference. They're all created equally in our prefrontal cortex. But if you decide that, that it is sadness or desperation or anxiety, your brain will pollute you with 1400 chemicals through your bloodstream, including cortisol and things like that. If you decide that it, it's excitement, your brain will shoot feel good chemicals through your bloodstream, like dopamine, endorphin, oxytocin, serotonin, depending if you're with others or if you're moving, like. Each of them have a, a different way of arriving in your bloodstream. But the, the, the bottom line is these feel good chemicals happen when you decide that the emotion is a positive one. So where am I going with this? Your goal, when you receive a package, that means you're feeling not so good. And then I promise, Joseph, I remember that you mentioned something about being tired at night. And I will talk about this right after. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. For you, it's at night, you're a little tired, and now you start having these powerful emotions, you are in prefrontal cortex overload. You started feeling down and you're not sure about yourself and why am I doing this anyway and blah, blah, blah. And then for a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, it's the imposter syndrome. It's, there's a lot of, of different emotions, right? Yeah. So when that happens, it means there's a truck in your driveway. So your goal is to immediately open the door receive the package and as soon as you receive the package figure out what is in the package what is your positive learning what are you going to become good at because there's usually fear when a truck comes in the driveway you open the package and you're like well i don't know i don't like this i'm uncomfortable i'm not good at this well it's normal it's new so you got to become new at, at presenting online or you got to become new at learning this next step of your journey. And that makes you grow every single time. So we need to figure out what is that learning? What am I becoming good at with this? What in a year from now, will I look back at this experience and say, oh my gosh, this powerful emotion brought me a gift. And the gift was I became much better at presenting online. I became much better at managing my business. I became much better at being confident. I found a strategy in order to feel more confident or whatever it is. So you have to look for the learning. So next time a truck comes in your driveway, instead of feeling, oh no, there's a truck in my driveway, you can go there for 30 to 90 seconds because that's a normal loop. And as soon as you finish your loop and you're feeling uncomfortable, ask yourself, oh, okay, I get it now. That means that I have a truck in my driveway. Oh my gosh, I'm receiving a gift. Oh, that's exciting. And if you go into excitement, your brain will send feel good, feel good chemicals that will help you and support you as you get to your learning and as you go through whatever it is that you are facing. So it's very important that, that you go through that process, understanding the emotion. Now you talked also about being tired. Yeah. And that's the number one thing that I talk to with my clients at the beginning when we start working together i always ask them so how's your sleep and they say oh my gosh my sleep is terrible the first thing we do is to work on making them sleep better because a lot of people diet self-diagnose themselves with anxiety and with this and with that and depression and burnout and before you self-diagnose yourself with anything just make sure you're not sleep deprived because you might just be sleep deprived. And if you fix that, 
it fixes everything. And there's a lot of things you can do for that. Remember, we talked about the personal assistant, right? Yeah. So before you go to bed, prepare your personal assistant loves your person doesn't need to sleep your personal assistant loves to work in the background give your personal assist, assistant something to do so that he can leave you alone overnight so then you say something like okay i have this article that i need to write i need to write my blog or i need to prepare this program for a client or i need to figure out how i'm going to pay my mortgage this month because i'm behind or i need to and then you need to think about this so then you go to bed and you can't sleep because your logical mind is busy doing that give the job to your personal assistant and say hey while i sleep comfortably while i have a full night's sleep and and i feel absolutely amazing in the background, why don't you go write my article for me? And tomorrow, when I wake up feeling rejuvenated and feeling amazing, you will tell me all the uh, great article that I've written. So when I get in front of my computer tomorrow morning and start to type, you will have already written it for me. I do this for everything that I have to do for when I, I'm a professional speaker. So I used to travel all the time. So I was constantly packing. So before I would go to bed, I would say, hey, why don't you go pack for me? Because my personal assistant, 2.3 million pieces of information every second. They know exactly all the clothes that I own, all the, the things that I need when I travel, all the things to make sure that I remember everything. So the next morning, it takes me 15 minutes and my suitcase is packed because my personal assistant has done all the packing while I was sleeping or whatever it is that you need to do, all the stuff that you need to, to think that keeps you awake at night Tell your personal assistant, why don't you go do this while I sleep comfortably and I will wake up tomorrow rejuvenated and I will feel amazing. Mm. So there's just one thing that you need to do before you do that. If you've been a chronic um, person that doesn't sleep well, you might need to start with an easier path before you can go into I'm an awesome speaker a sleeper I can sleep very well and I sleep all night because these are called affirmations right and yeah. and and you might you might uh practice the, practice them and 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 it's it's a good idea um I just want to warn you that affirmations don't work <laughs> if you oh, don't really? believe them they don't work if you don't believe them oh, because yeah. every single time that that you say an affirmation if you roll your eyes and and you go uh yeah no uh that's not it like if i work with the think yourself thin program clients that are highly overweight i can't just say okay look at yourself in the mirror and say i am thin or if i work with the clients that uh let's say the think yourself wealthy program clients that are in deep financial struggle i can't not tell them okay put your hands on your hips and say i am rich <laughs> because their personal assistant is like uh, no we're not <laughs> not at all she's not talking to me i'm not writing this down this is nonsense we must be watching a vampire movie and vampires don't exist i'm not writing that this down this is nonsense at all because on my list i have all the contrary to this what you want to do when you start a positive affirmation is use that two-step technique. The very first step is to say, I used to think that I was a bad sleeper. So you rephrase it in the past. So you just heard yourself, oh my gosh, I'm not going to sleep all night again and I'll wake up tired. Oh, wait a minute, personal assistant. Whoa, whoa, uh, I don't want you to write that down on the clipboard. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, I used to think, that I was a bad sleeper. So now your personal assistant is like, oh yeah, bad sleeper. I have that on my list right here. Yeah, uh, why are you talking about this in the past? Are we done with this? And then it's time to go to the second step. Then you follow up with a progressive statement. A progressive statement starts with, I am willing to learn or I'm in the process of, okay? Mm. So I used to think I was a bad sleeper. Now I'm willing to learn how it feels to wake up absolutely rejuvenated now i'm in the process of making my sleep much better because this your personal assistant is going to say yes she's talking to me but if i talk to um if you hear yourself say oh i'm so stressed out and then you say i am calm my life is balanced your personal assistant is going to be like no we're not but if you say 
I used to think that I was stressed out all the time. I used to feel stressed out all the time. Now I'm willing to create a balanced life for myself. And that is true. Your personal assistant will work on this and will write that down on the list because that feels absolutely right. And you have to find a way to say it so that when you say it, your gut understands it. We have over 7,000 billion neural, neural connection in our brain and 100,000 of them are in our gut. So we thought that all the, all the neurons and everything was, were in the brain, but they're not. 100,000 of them are in our gut. So follow your gut. And when you can feel that it sounds right, that means you found your affirmation. So affirmation do work if you do it the proper way, right? Mm, now, yeah. you mentioned one more thing. You said, for me, it's when I'm tired of at night. And then um, you already gave the strategy away. And your strategy is, and this is exactly what I tell people, so not knowing you already had the strategy, is when you're tired at night, you start talking to yourself, like maybe with words that you don't really love, you say to yourself, wait, Joseph, you're just tired, go to bed and you'll feel better tomorrow morning. And that's exactly what I do. When I start feeling like this, because I, I get up at a quarter to five every day. So by 8.30 or 9 p.m., I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, I go to bed so early. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. So I, I know that at night I'm more tired. And, and when we are more tired, sometimes that negative self-talk comes in uh, loosely, <laughs> right? So the first thing you have to say is, okay, why is this? negative self-talk in my head. Why do I have all these trucks in my driveway all of a sudden? What's happening there? I must just be tired. So before you self-diagnose yourself with burnout or whatever, just go to bed, or drink more water um, and, and have a good night's sleep and you'll feel better. And the, the second thing that I always say, this was not mentioned earlier, but the there's two things about self-diagnosing yourself with with something. Oh, that's um, scary. That's a dangerous, that's dangerous territory. It's so dangerous, right? I say before you self-diagnose yourself with anxiety or with anything, make sure you're not sleep de deprived. And the second thing I say is make sure you're not surrounded by morons <laughs> because <laughs> very often we have a people around us that, that may be uh, not always serving us. So we mm -hmm. are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So we want to make sure that people around us are uplifting us, that uh, there, there could be potentially people around us that are draining us. And then we self-diagnose ourselves with, with, oh, I'm this, or oh, I'm that. Or, but sometimes people have a different journey and they don't feel so good about themselves and, and they have bigger problems than we do. So we must one try to help them and say okay well i i first you try to help them and you ask them okay what would you like instead of of if they're you know really talking about something bad and and the whole world is there to get them and it's so draining and everything is negative and so of course we try to help them and after a while if they don't want to be helped it means that maybe they are at that stage of their journey and that's fine and they can stay there for a little bit longer, but we're going to move on to our, the next step of our journey. And when they're ready, they'll join us. And maybe we'll do four steps before they're ready to go to the next one. People are not in our lives forever, even family members. We can always choose to see them less often um, and, and not be as available. Or instead of doing dinner for three hours, we do coffee for 20 minutes or half an hour, or we make sure that we don't let people around us affect us. And I've made the decision to surround myself with amazing people that uplift me all the time. Like if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> you you got to, right? Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. You know, and I, I, it's, there, I was thinking about it and I, this is a, and I've had conversations with people where, you know, they would get together at a wedding, you know, like friends from high school and then it's a big wedding, but people, they, have, they haven't seen each other in person and you, you see the clicks 
kind of like the different cliques or different groups develop. And I've, I've heard comments where it's like, it's a shame, you know, we've been so close. Well, like, look, this is what happens. And this is the analogy I used to use. I think I still use, it's still valid. We all walk a path together. In your circle, you're walking that path together, but there'll be moments where you're going to hit a fork in a road where one direction is meant for that person or that group of people, and the other direction is meant for you. Some paths will run parallel to each other and eventually meet up or parallel to the point where you can still say, hey, how's it going over there? And you still have that connection. And there's other times where that person is going to go completely 90 degrees or even 180 and go back the other direction. And I've noticed that in my life where I'm like, oh, I used to hang out with that people, but their life went a different direction than mine. Do I hate them? Do I loathe them? Do I resent them? No, I respect them still. It's just life yeah. went differently uh, for all of us. And we, and it's just re- acknowledging that and respecting that and respecting that the fact that the people who are in your life right now who lift you up are there for a reason that meant to be there. I mean, I, one of my principles of resilience, uh, the fifth one, which is my favorite one, is create your choir. Surround yourself with those who make it your soul sing, yet yeah. surround yourself with those who allow you to make their sing in return. And I've proven that over the, I've proven my own theories. Like, this is not theory. This is like something that has helped me. Uh, I have surround myself with people like Sergeant Ken, yourself, Natalie, you know, like I, I connect with people. And, and when I'm on, you know, when I'm, when I'm on social media, and I, this is a, a guys, you know, for you you're listening right now and you feel like social media is a drain on you. If there's some people in their stories or the posts that are just draining you, just negative comments, and you don't want to hear it, restrict, block, remove, do something. And it don't feel bad because it's, it's, you know, you still have that external connection if you, your friends or family, but since the, you're feeding this information regularly, and I agree, you're feeding this information and you're like, and it's putting you down. And if people are pulling you down, it means they're already beneath you. And I feel you got to rise up and set the example. And there were so many things that you brought up as well. And when it came to just connecting and setting up that ladder, you're talking about the chapters in your life as well. You're at this chapter, but then, you know, you want to kind of, I think John C. Maxwell put it, uh, uh, said it best, you know, he doesn't surround himself with people at the same level or or be like he, he will always look for someone who's ahead of him. he doesn't want to be the smart like you said and you mentioned it he doesn't want to be the smartest person in the room no and i exactly. think we we got to crush that ego a little bit it's like it feels uncomfortable but it's an oh opportunity. yeah it's an opportunity yeah. and we've discovered opportunity and i'll tell you this in the past year and a half or whatever months <laughs> this is the pandemic i think a lot of us have you know we it's 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 a sucky situation it's not ideal but we, thinking back, we have been given a lot of opportunity, a lot of opportunities for growth, to create relationships, to do amazing things. And whether, and whether or not we recognize it, there's some small things we've done. We probably some, we said something and impacted somebody. I got a message for this podcast. One of, the, my, one of my shows, uh, episodes, someone messages me and say, thank you. I needed to hear this today. I'm like, whoa. Wow. And you realize the power you have. I think we, we underestimate ourselves, Natalie. We underestimate ourselves. And your tagline, you are awesome, describes us best. And as we need to, like, I, I hate to use the word need, but let's put it in our vocabulary a lot more often. Look at ourselves mm-hmm. in the mirror and say, you are awesome. You are going to make someone else awesome today or feel awesome. And, and just retraining re- that. And we can, we, you know, we grow. Um, uh, so I got a few more questions, Natalie. I mean, there's a lot, I, I seriously, I know there's a lot, by the way, before we leave, you're going to, before we, uh, how about I say, uh, end, uh, leave our conversation, you're going to leave our, your contact information because people definitely got to check uh, what you have to offer. You have a lot of, um, uh, how I say education uh, for the fit pro, the entrepreneur, uh, how to be grateful, you know, and, and different things. And I, I love it. I also have your gratitude book as well, which is really cool. Um, and I would have gone into journaling as well uh, to talk about it because journaling has a huge impact, right? And yeah. helps us all with that personal assistant. It's uncomfortable, but, um, um, but when you start talking about it, it kind of, makes us realize yes we are on the right track of doing amazing things and we are worthy of a lot um 
couple of rapid fire questions. A couple of rapid fire questions okay. before we end our conversation. Now, you know, the show is called the Mindfully Resilient Podcast. Okay, I talk about mindful. I, I know and what's funny is talking about resilience, but we have to, I think mindfulness goes hand in hand with resilience because in order to be resilient, you need to know, be aware of what's going on. So what does resilience mean to you? So resilience really is to keep going when you face a challenge. So let's say you are driving home one day and there is a tree blocking the road. So are you going to go and turn around with your car and say, well, oh, no, there's a tree blocking the road. I can't get to my house. Well, OK, I guess I'm never going to see my spouse and my kids again. Oh, I'm going to miss them. I have to go buy a new house now and buy all new furniture. That's too bad. Well, no. Right. Like you would not do that. Like you would park your car and walk home or you would find another route and get to your house. There's no tree that would get you to abandon your family and your home. Yeah. And the thing is, very quickly, we abandon our family and our home. We abandon our goals, our dreams, that purpose, that dream you have on the back burner that you keep pushing away. Uh, we, we keep abandoning it. And, and we need to instead uh, find the chainsaw and cut the tree. We need to, to go around it. We need to find a new route. We need to be prepared to walk home when there's when there's a tree blocking the road. So we need to really understand why we're doing what we are doing. And in that case, it's your home, your family, your kids. But right now I'm not talking about your home. I'm talking about something a lot more important. I'm talking about you, your dream, your life. Like, like have you ever seen an infant that is trying to walk, that is falling over and over, that ever said, oh no, that's not for me. No, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to crawl. Well, no, right? The kid gets back up and then they keep trying until they walk, right? So let's not leave a tree or let's not allow a, a, an obstacle make us say, oh, no, that's not for me. Now I tried the entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurship thing and, and that's not for me or, oh, no, it doesn't matter. Well, yes, you matter. You have one life. This is your dream. You are supposed to do this. And it will keep coming back over and over until you realize your dream. Because even though it is a very um, noble thought to want to do everything for everybody else and take care of your kids and take care of your house and take care of your family and, and want to do that for them, at the end of the day, you can't help your kids, your family, your clients, if you don't help yourself first. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that drive, if you don't have that confidence in your belly that, that is driving you no matter what, that, that absolute dream that you really want to do, if you don't do it, that's the only reason why you're on this earth. That's your purpose. So if you're not doing your purpose, what are you doing? Like... <laughs> so so you have to understand that you will be a much better father a much better coach a much better being there for everybody else if you start with yourself so find that inside yourself find your confidence and that's how you'll be able to to go and push beyond any obstacle when when resilience come uh handy and resilience to me long story short it's that confidence inside yourself it's that internal driver that why that will make you push through no matter what i love that i love that i mean yeah i totally agree with you the confidence and just yeah we need to to be confident and say yes we have we there, there are to recognize there are options to to take the shields down and say okay what do we have here assess the situation what do we have the io improvise uh, adapt and and overcome uh, that's a the thing I was using recently. Um, little on a lighter note, one more thing, music. Like, I don't know if you noticed, like in my post, and I love music. Music inspires yes. me when it comes to creating. And it also inspires my workouts. Yeah. Life. What song would best describe your life right now? I have to say that with the, um, with the way 
um, things are opening up again. And, and, and it seems that there's more behind us uh, of that pandemic than in front of us. Uh, I'm thrilled, I'm excited. And the best song that can describe how I feel right now is the James Brown, I feel good. <laughs> I knew that I would. <laughs> so I, like, that's the first, uh, yeah, the, yeah, that's really, I feel really good right now. I feel like, and it's, it's nice outside. Um, I just got the, the, um, I have a membership at the sailing club and we're going to go paddle boarding. Uh, we got the keys. So the club is open for the summer now and um, our rooftop deck is power washed and we're ready to, to be outside all the time. And I, I feel great. <laughs> so James Brown is, is the, is the answer. Definitely. Oh, that's a fantastic song. And I know that song will be in a lot of people's heads right now. <laughs> yeah. So, I love yeah. it. Um, now, how can people get in touch with you, Natalie? Okay. So there's many things. Um, we can uh, connect on social. So my Facebook is Natalie Plamonon Thomas or Think Yourself Academy. Uh, Instagram is Natalie P. Think Yourself. On LinkedIn, I'm Natalie Plamonon Thomas. Um, and you can send me an email, Natalie with an H, N A T H A L I E, at thinkyourself.com. Or you can book a free virtual coffee with me. I would love to have a, a virtual coffee with you. So you would go to thinkyourself.com slash schedule. So you go to thinkyourself.com slash schedule, and then you can book a free virtual coffee. There's lots that we can do in uh, 15 minutes in a virtual coffee. Um, I can help you with your promise statement. I can help you getting rid of a limiting belief. I can help you um, do whatever uh, it is that. Um, you'd like to do a bit of cleaning. I'm like a brain dentist. So let's get rid of a, a few cavities and see, uh, and see how we can clear off some of the stuff in that drawer so that you can react in a way that um, you actually want to react when you open the drawer. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna encourage uh, all the listeners here to book that, at least that free, that virtual coffee. Um, I've, you know, on multiple occasions, you and I like, informally and formally, I mean, you and I have had conversations and a lot of great information has helped me personally as well um, throughout my journey as a, as a coach and I guess as a speaker, you know, it's slowly yeah. taking off. It's slowly taking off. So uh, I, I strongly encourage that folks go for it. Um, Natalie, I want to thank you a million because I, I think of you in the highest of regards as a person who, you know, not, you know, you have inspired, I've seen you inspire a lot of folks. And as the host of the conference, as a full, you know, as, as, you know, the Cafe Pro conference, even Activate, I have, you know, uh, led right. by uh, our friend Connie Beaulieu, you know, I, I see people like they're so drawn into you and the comments coming in. And you have created a lot of impact and you serve as a role model, as an example for coaches like myself. So uh, thank you very much for jumping on this uh, podcast and sharing a lot of wisdom. I know there's a lot more, um, but uh, this was great. So uh, Natalie, thank you very much once again. And I hope you have a fantastic uh, day and enjoy the paddle boarding. Yes, thank you so much, Joseph. And thank you for inspiring so many people. So I know that your followers are looking up to you. You are transforming lives. And when I mentioned the book reading chapters, I believe that very soon you will have read two more chapters and you'll be ahead of me helping me out getting to the next chapter because you're the 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 speed at which you are building your business and growing is is uh, fascinating and, and, cont and contagious as well. You, you make people want to be, uh, they want to be you. They want to do what you do. And, and it's, mm. it's fantastic. Yeah. So thank you for inspiring people. Well, and coming from you, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So have a great day. Thank you. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. I hope you got to take some notes down. This was a conversation to remember. A lot of great pieces of wisdom here so if you were driving when you get to your destination or when you get back home take that pen and paper come go back to the timestamp 
uh, where you where that where something captivated you, or something resonated with you, and write it down. No, heck, listen to the whole episode all over again and take notes down. Write it down. Writing provides clarity. Clarity precedes genius. You know that quote uh, from my mentor and friend Todd Durkin. And it's true. When you write it down, it becomes you know how to say a little more concrete. It, it it's easier to retain. Now before I continue, let's do something. If you have a mirror nearby, if you have a mirror nearby, uh, stand in front of it or put it in front of you and stare into it. Stare back into it with your eyes or stare back into your eyes. Stare at your reflection. And if you don't have a mirror, take out your phone and use the front facing camera. And it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to hit that record button in the process. And if you don't have a phone, simply just say out loud what I'm about to ask you to repeat. Okay. And now you're going to repeat after me with intention, with heart, with soul. You ready? All right, let's go. I am awesome. All right, let's do it again. I am awesome. I see you smiling there. I see you. You're smiling. I can, I can't see you, but I can feel it. I can feel you smiling right now. And because you just realized that you are awesome. Even if you didn't believe it, you said it out loud. It became a reality. You are awesome. My friend, you are awesome. It's not a lie. I believe you are. I believe you are creating awesome impact, doing awesome things, amazing things. Even if you don't believe it, you have at least one person you know who believes in you and he's talking to you right now through this podcast. You know, we all know firsthand how language, our choice of words can affect a relationship with others. <laughs> we all know, we, we know this all too well. You know, we can say one thing and somebody can interpret it in a totally different other context. You know, or, you know, even through texting, you know, you know, like sometimes the, the, the intonations, the, the character of the message gets lost. It's not there, just dry. So people interpret it how they read it. You know, we've gotten into trouble a few times, right? We, with, with, you know, we'd say, oh, no, I didn't mean it to say it that way. I, didn't mean, I meant it another way. Or sometimes, you know, it, the, the, the right word doesn't come out. <laughs> but another word that you don't want to say comes out in its place. <laughs> and then it just, it just snowballs. Mm, you're digging a hole deeper and deeper. You know, you know, it, 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 like I said, it can affect relationships with others. However, we rarely think of the relationship vis-a-vis -vis ourselves. The words we use to describe ourselves will, will dictate our moods, our behaviors, thus impacting our resilience, the way we respond to an event. You know, if you, re, if you remind yourself that you are worthy, and by the way, speaking of worthiness, go back to episode 36 uh, my conversation, my, in my conversation with Amanda Almond. We talk about worthiness and we talk about self-talk as well. If you remind yourself that you are more than capable, that you are great, that you have the skills, the knowledge, that you have the desire to learn, there'll be no room for any stinking thinking. On the flip side, if you tell yourself otherwise, then you're not giving your resilience a fighting chance. You'll end up manifesting that negative self-talk and turning that life an image of yourself you're complaining about, that you're worrying about, into a reality. If you keep on saying, I'm a bad coach, I'm a bad father, I'm a bad husband, I'm a bad friend, well, guess what? You're going to end up becoming one. You're a bad teacher, or whatever it is. Or that you're not awesome, that you're, you're not... How would I say you don't have the talent, the skills? Keep on saying that to yourself. Well, yeah, you are going to turn into reality and that's what's going to happen. Heck, as Natalie mentioned it, would you talk to your dearest friends, to your family in the same way you talk to yourself? Now, if it's positive stuff, that's great. But if it's negative, would you do that? You know, it simply takes shifting perspective. Now, if I may, I'll use, I'll use myself as an example here. Now, there are times I feel I didn't deliver a stellar group workout session because I may have missed uh, an exercise or I went overtime, I missed a rep. I, I actually, you know, set a certain standard for myself, a pretty high standard, which results in me being my own worst critic. However, the participants feel amazing. They feel great that they got a sweaty workout in, that they moved, that they 
did something that they know will benefit them. So did I succeed in my mission? Definitely yes. Now, if I'm learning something new, like, like what I'm learning right now, Photoshop, and can get and can't get it right the first time, I'll sometimes feel incapable. I have this, this, uh, these ideas where I'm like, I can't do it, I can't do it. But then I, I remind myself I'm learning something new. And I remind myself that growth takes time. And I try to remember to enjoy the experience one small step at a time. And then I feel like I'm accomplishing something. And I know in Photoshop, they have these little tutorials that last three to five minutes. If I do a three to five minute tutorial, I learn something new. And, you know, I can go on with examples, but I think you get the idea. It takes practice to be mindful, to shift perspective, to, to really work on that positive self-talk. It's not, it's, it's not easy. It's easy. It's easy not to shift perspective when ego is involved. When you take ego out of the equation, that's when you can clearly see the awesome soul and the awesome, the awesome soul you, you truly are and the awesome deeds, the awesomeness you are creating. Now, if this episode or this podcast really fires you up, I mean, this episode in particular fired you up, made you feel great and you know you know, it could really help somebody else. Please take an opportunity to, to share this episode with them. Send them the link. Do whatever it takes. Share it on social media with your friends. And if you do so, be sure to tag me. And if you are, if you are listening to the show on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, please take a moment. And if this show resonated with you, leave a five-star uh, five star rating and a review. I would truly appreciate it. And as I always mention, I look at the reviews because they help me in understanding what to what to offer you as lessons, as coaching, as guidance. Because don't forget, I am your coach and I am your mentor. So, my friends, remind yourself again how awesome you are. Let's let's do that again. Repeat after me. I am awesome. That's right. You are. And smile. Feel confident about it. You'll also positively impact everybody around you in the process. That's a great thing. That's an amazing thing. Now, it's not a bad deal. And it will be easy to live every day with joy, curiosity, and passion. <laughs>